youtube.com forward slash mugenlord subscribe to the channel for gaming news updates discussion and live streams signing off Hey guys, it's Moogalore here and I'm back again with another video and I just want to just go into another discussion that's non-video game related but it's still gaming related and I figured that hey, it'd be a good discussion for us to talk about and today we're going to talk about Google Stadia which I find quite interesting is because we talked about this months ago and what I thought about it and the potential that it could possess in the near future as far as how gaming has been going through an evolution as far as how we consume games whether it's physical and now we're going into this whole digital era and cloud gaming which companies are definitely looking into because i believe that's where the future of gaming is eventually going to be and the selling point of the google stadium was the simple fact is that hey you'll be able to play your games on any device anywhere from the cloud and you'll get this you know streamless or you know uh the streamlined gaming experience with no interruptions uh 4k resolution 60 frames per second everything they were trying to sell to you guys or sell to the press sell to the consumer about how they're going to be the ones that's going to lead and they even made a bold statement saying that you know they're going to convince gamers to make this their primary source of gaming and as far as i'm concerned or in, in as far as what everybody else is saying and the way it's looking right now i don't think that's going to happen so we want to just dive into this article because I, I thought it was pretty interesting and i want to hear your thoughts on it as well and it looks like from forbes it looks like that uh destiny's 2 google uh, stadia population has dropped by more than half um, since launch now why are we talking about destiny 2 well the simple fact is that google stadia was pretty much promoting this as their headline game for you to jump on board with google stadia now the thing is i'm not really a big destiny fan um i do have destiny 2 for the simple fact is i'm a psn gold member so it, it was one time that there that she was able to get uh destiny 2 for free um if you was a gold member and i think this is this is months ago so that's the only reason why i grabbed uh destiny and gave it a try and i wasn't really a big fan of it and everything but i still see that there is a big community um for this so they really wanted to sell this off as a selling point to get um the google stadia and i want to talk more about that um after we go through some of this article and everything because i just find this quite interesting that what made them think that this was a good idea to pretty much use games that already exist as a selling point for people to want to go pick up a stadia so while i may have uh fixed um my issues with um, with stadia in my home and that was another thing um when stadia had launched a lot of people had a hard time trying to get the best performance out of the google stadia at their home so it wasn't like one size fit all everybody had to go through different methods in order to get google stadia to play as it was advertised so he said in that i can actually play it without significant lag these days i have been trying to keep an ear out uh, for how google service is being received more generally and overwhelmingly i hear silence it's hard to know just how many people are playing stadia at any given moment but there's one metric we can use to gauge interest to some degree at least the stats of the destiny 2 player base if Stadia has had a flagship launch game, it would be Destiny 2, which I said before, which is not only offered free with the pro subscription, but is a rare game that takes advantage of cross saves, meaning that your existing uh, Destiny 2 character can be played on Stadia uh, friendly devices. It's theoretically the best use uh, case uh, for this service. So um, yeah, cross saves is still not common, not that much common yet, um, in gaming and I think also that has a lot to do with um, the competition um, between the consoles and everything you know there's no um, no real incentive for, for the competitor to allow if you spend money on a particular game and the service and you spend constant money on like the DLC um, you know uh, costumes all kinds of cosmetics and all stuff all that kind of stuff like that it keeps it uh developers or the companies themselves want to keep that in their ecosystem so if you're able to carry that out 
of that one um, game on one console or whatever and then carry it over or whatever like that you're taking that potential money in that that um, in that ecosystem over to your competition so having cross saves especially when it comes to games like games of a service like destiny 2 or like fortnite and stuff like that um you know uh, people are quite you know companies are quite reluctant to to do that so this have stadia to utilize cross saves and stuff like that i think that is a good selling point um for stadia and only if stadia will utilize that or have something worked out even more for the utilize call saves in that way so it don't feel like that players are taking a risk or having to start all over again and spend and grind all those hours out spend all that money once again um just to get to the level that they were at on their previous account so and yet if you've uh, been tracking the player population um uh, population interest in stadia version of destiny appears to be fading while yes we are moving away from the shadow keep expansion launch and into the less in engaging season of dawn uh, we are not seeing similar drops on other platforms here are players populations for destiny 2 on this platform on november to uh 26 2019 about after about a week after stadia launched so the PC had 494,000, uh, PS4 has 454,000, Xbox has 331,000, and Stadia have 19,400. And yikes. And here are the uh, player population yesterday, just over a month later. Oh, wow. So PCs, 437,000, uh, PS4, 435,000, Xbox, 313,000, and Stadia, 8,020 yeah so that is that is yeah that is a significant drop right there you can see some drops from the other platforms about what i expect um given that there's less to do right now in the game um than there was a month ago perhaps but stadia stadia's population has fallen by more than 50 percent by 58.7 um, percent to be exact and honestly it's probably even worse than that because in the week of Stadia's launch, founders um, units were still coming in and getting um, set up. This was also before the Buddy Pass system was implemented as well, which allows subscribers to give free trial access to Stadia um, to friends. Despite all that, we've seen numbers plummet. So the way I see it, um, there are a few explanations for this. For first, you have uh, someone like me who can appreciate how Destiny um on stadium might be useful to a certain situations like going home over the holidays and yet when i get back in my office here there's simply no reason for me to pick up stadia over my ps4 and pc which he does have a point right there there's no reason once you get into your office or where you're at where your console is at to want to go pick up stadia and i think that's what the problem is so why would a, a gamer who always been gaming ditch what they already have just to pick stadia which is just all digital it's all in the cloud and cloud gaming still haven't proven to be um uh, it still haven't proven itself to be something that you know is worth you know ditching everything for just to just make that your primary source of gaming and everything and i think that's what the what the issue is with stadia no one knows what this is being marketed to and if you already have other gaming devices and everything that does the job pretty damn well without any hiccups or any other uh, um connections that you have to go through just to um get it up and running um then why go for it so he said a second group is new stadia players who tried destiny 2 and bounced off of it another stat you can track is what people are playing on a platform and pretty much since launch a disproportionate number of stadia players have been in portal mode aka wandering around doing essentially nothing rather than missions strikes crucibles gambits raids or other actual activities so maybe they just never knew uh, what they were doing and wandered away when it wasn't engaging Wow, so that's 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 crazy. So the third explanation is just that Stadia in general is not all that popular and actively losing 
popularity over time at least for some titles for destiny that's a big problem as a game like that cannot exist without a big population to fill its activity matchmaking can anything change this uh, trajectory well there is the obviously next uh step for stadia debuting its free tier the one that doesn't require a subscription but unless i'm mistaken if you're not playing for stadia pro paying for stadia pro you don't have access to free games list which includes destiny 2 so i'm not sure how much this will help if players um then have to buy it separately if I'm wrong it, and it remains free to everyone then perhaps these numbers will see a boost and I think that's the thing I think another thing that's just holding back uh, Stadia is the fact is that you have to rebuy all the games that you have from your previous um, consoles there's no like Netflix type of like subscription deals that they have where you just pay a subscription monthly subscription and then you have access to uh, a lot of AAA games or um, access to free games and all kinds of other stuff and the fact is that not only does you have to pay for the pro service for Google Stadia, then you have to kick an additional $60. And it seemed like another thing which which is ridiculous and which is nuts is the fact is that a lot of these games on Stadia has been out for a little over a year or beyond that and they're charging the full price. And they're charging a fresh new price opposed to selling it at, you know, the price that you would think that it should be valued at for the fact is that the game had been out for so long. So now that, you know, if I already spent money on like Final Fantasy uh, 15 on PS4, paid full price and everything. Man, if I got the collector's edition and got the real edition or whatever. And then Google Stadia comes out and now I got Final Fantasy 15. They sit there and they expect me to rebuy that exact game that I already have on PS4 once again. And then on a service that haven't been proven yet to be a great service to invest your time and your money into. So I think that's where the main issue and where people are drawing the line at. And like I said before, who are they marketing to? Who, who, who are they trying to grab? Because, like I said, if you're already a gamer and you already have your Nintendo Switch, your PS4, your Xbox One, or whatever other devices that you're playing games on, then what is the incentive to want to go buy a Google Stadia? I mean, people will much rather just wait till they get home and be able to play. And if you have a Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch, you can just carry it anywhere, your gaming experience anywhere on the go, and then come home and then uh, play it on your television. So uh, there's a lot going against the Google Stadia. And they also been haven't been promising any of their uh, uh, features as well. People still wait on certain features, and then the whole 4K thing, you know, they advertised that you'd be able to play in 4K. Then they said that it's really up to the developers whether or not they want it to be streamed in, you know, a natural, uh, true 4K and stuff like that. And instead of just Google Stadia just delivering with the 4K, so there's a lot of issues um, going on. Um, with this console now the thing is i'm all for competition i think the more consoles that's on the market it breeds better competition it creates better products and it's a win-win situations for both the industry and also um consumers who love video games so um i do hope that google stadia uh does get itself together because we do have microsoft um doing the whole x cloud thing x cloud gaming which I really think, and it's been proven, a lot of people have been saying good things about the whole xCloud from what they played and what they tried um, of the xCloud. So if Google Stadia does it get it together, Microsoft can pretty much swallow that market and everything. And I think it'll be, I think they'll have a hard time trying to redeem themselves, especially after their whole rough launch that they have. So they definitely gonna need some exclusives that's gonna get people to wanna go buy it. And they have to prove that, hey, you can get this 4K gaming uh, consistently you can get this 60 frames per second consistently um, on our servers and stuff and I think they should have better like deals or change their business model to the point where it can be like a Netflix but for um, but with gaming and everything or a way to bring over your cross slate saves over to the platform and they definitely need to have more deals to be in more games and any more current games than pretty much bringing over games that have been out for quite some time on the market so google you have to get yourself together with the google stadia and like i said before um as far as cloud gaming is concerned you have to start somewhere and i said and even in my old videos um uh, related to the topic of google stadia google stadia is a start I, I think coming out the gate i knew it wasn't going to be perfect but i didn't think it was going to be this bad um but 
if gaming's going to shift this direction, going to the cloud route, going all digital and everything, somebody has to kick it off. Somebody have to be, somebody have to push forward, lay that roadmap, lay that example, and then other companies will pick up and enhance, approve upon it, and make it better and everything like that. So this is a very rough start for them. Hopefully they get it together. Hopefully they can prove um, what they've been advertising that they can be a superior platform in order to uh, lead cloud gaming and everything. But that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this topic. Would you let, let me know if you have Google Stadia. Um, what do you think about it? Do you think it's a pretty good uh, device, a platform to game on? Uh, what is your experience of um, with Stadia as far as hooking it up, setting it, setting it up? Do you have any troubles with it? Um, in the comment section, um, about this um, particular topic is I think it's really important because uh, I really want to know from you guys um, if you guys do own this um, device and what you think about it and do you think that Google Stadia can pretty much redeem itself and fix things and stuff and how would they go about it definitely want to hear that as well so if you like the video share pass it around subscribe and if you want to hear more information and news related to uh, Google Stadia uh, please hit the bell to be notified this is Moogan Lord signing off I'll see you game fiends later. Peace out. It looks like you reached the end of the video. Well, while you're at it, check out some of my other discussion videos by clicking on the annotations below. And don't forget to follow me on other social media platforms to stay up to date with future content. Signing off.